Glory to God. Be not filled with wine. Don't be filled with anything right now but Jesus. Amen? Really, you have to make a, a decisive, dedicated um, move towards keeping yourself uh, in a continual place of, uh, you know, I don't want to just say receiving, but fellowshipping with the Lord, being conscious, I should say, being aware of him, especially in these times we're, we're living in right now. Not that, you know, I don't know. Uh, are they hard times? I guess. I mean, I, I suppose people in other eras and people in other circumstances and people in other countries are in a lot uh, much worse condition than you and I. Okay. Um, and they're not even dealing with the COVID in a sense, you know what I mean? Or uh, there's people that have already been scaled down to where, you know, they were digging through trash for food. So, you know, their lifestyle and circumstances were already like, you know, uh, very challenging. Uh, they already were dealing with different uh, physical ailments and bodily issues, you know, all around the world. They didn't have a Kaiser or a hospital or a, so, I mean, but they're hard to a degree for us. I don't know uh, how much physically they are, but I would say mentally and emotionally they're challenging because this whole situation going on around the world has knocked everybody out of their normal routine. Right. And so, um, you know, humans are like creatures of habit in a sense, right? You kind of like a routine, don't you? And there's nothing wrong with that. But when it gets bumped out, you know, it, it can become, um, you know, challenging, frustrating, or unsettling, right? Because you like to have consistency, right? So um, anyway, but we're able to deal with things. Um, and actually, we just going to read over in uh, Timothy real quick. Second uh, Timothy three, <clears throat> it says, uh, but understand this, that in the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress and trouble. Hard to deal with and hard to bear. Hard to deal with and hard to bear. So that's what you're seeing. Hard times of stress and hard to deal with and hard to bear, you know, uh, in the natural. Amen? And things are hard to, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to just say, you know, process naturally. And uh, you can see the whole world and governments and everybody trying to do it naturally, right? They're trying to do it out of their minds, out of their own intellect, out of their own experience, out of their own education. And it ain't done nothing really, right? People are still trying to figure it out. Well, the Lord has an answer for you and I. It's, and, and the amazing thing about the Lord's answer, it doesn't need to be made in a laboratory, <laughs> right? He doesn't need to have a board meeting. He doesn't need to have a collective, uh, you know, uh, uh, gathering of all the greatest, brilliant scientists and doctors and politicians and uh, human thought. He doesn't need a collective mind, you know, to figure things out. Amen. The Lord doesn't need any of that. Right? He already has the answer. Glory to God. One drop of blood, glory. One drop of the blood of Jesus. I mean, that's the truth. Well, you either believe this book, right? And this book is spiritual. Although there was, uh, you know, the event of the crucifixion and, and of the resurrection and the life and ministry of Jesus, ultimately, all the, these things were planned and purposed in the heart and in the mind of God, even before the foundation of the world. And so when you and I believe, faith is a powerful force. Amen? Faith is a powerful force. Faith is substance. It's, it's of the spirit. And what's of the spirit is unseen. Glory to God. 
And so there's a substance called faith. Now faith is a substance. The basis of things uh, hoped for, things not seen, right? And so that faith that you and I have is able to reach out into the unseen realm and receive the reality of our existence. Amen. I know you don't think your existence is just on planet Earth for 40 to 80 years. Amen. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Right? Substance. You know, I guess we could, the basis, the foundation, right? Just like this building has a foundation. Faith is a foundation upon which our lives are built. The scripture tells us we walk by faith, not by sight. Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, we regulate our lives by what our persuasions and convictions are, not by what's external, by what's, uh, what's seen, but by the unseen realm. So your faith and my faith are able to reach out through our tongue and access and connect with the unseen realm amen we're able to connect with the truth the truth what is the truth that as i said one droplet of, of the blood of jesus is more than enough now someone says well uh you know i know a person and they got sick and they went to church it's not about going to church let's clarify that right? It's not about just going to church. You can go to church all day long and never have a revelation personally. Come on now. Now we're drilling into some things. That's just the truth. Now, would to God that everybody had a revelation. I mean, that's God's plan, that you get a personal revelation. That means that the, that the Lord is able to expose you, to pull back the veils of your your spiritual eyes so that you can see and behold who he really is all that he's done all that he's given the place you have while you in him but that works itself out in the planet earth while you while you live down here on earth amen that you can see god's redemptive uh uh uh, uh plan that's already been executed and is already a finished work it's finished. And all you and I got to do is uh, correspond to that, respond to that, right? And then collaborate with one another in faith, right? That's the answer. Amen? I don't walk around every day and talk about tying my shoes. I just do it. Amen? Confession bursts, you know, uh, uh, the reality of who you are and brings into possession what you are. But after you possess something, it's yours. You just live with it, right? So you might essentially start and saying, I'm COVID free and making that declaration, but then you just wake up with a consciousness. Now it's good that when the devil shoots an arrow your way of fear, doubt, and unbelief, you just reaffirm that, who you are, amen? You're COVID free. I mean, here's the reality. You either believe the spirit of God in you, Romans 8, 11, is stronger. You know, that's it. The resurrection life. Now, I, I realize this, that many times people, uh, they, they're not at that place. Well, you can get yourself to that place. You know, it's possible for you to get to the gym and look like, a, you know, a model. It's possible, isn't it? I mean, it's possible for Kim to still, you know, get in the gym and look like he's, you know, buffed up and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. He's going to have to put the time, the focus, and the attention on that. It's possible to go to that place. It's possible. So it's possible, amen? But you have to invest that time, uh, cultivate a lifestyle of such. And in the same way, it's the same with the reality of who you are in Christ. So if Romans 8, 11, the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he quickens your, makes lie your mortal body. If you cultivate that truth in you, 
spiritually. In the Bible, the scriptures actually talk about for uh, bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Having a promised life now is not that which is to come. So this is for you and I, and I'm just going to say this. You need to keep a balance in life. It's good to be healthy because you need to take care of your temple, but don't get so over-focused on your body, okay? You know, I'm just saying, you know, you want, you know, people trade their body for their spirit. They trade their body for their spirit, all right? They stay focused and attending on, and there ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, you need to watch what you eat, you know, be in touch because, you know, junk in, I mean, you know, junkity junk, you know? But that in no means, there's a lot of people on planet Earth today, and they're in some, they're looking really good outwardly, but I'll tell you, they're going to hell. So don't be deceived, friend. Don't just think because they look good on planet Earth and they got some biceps and muscles and they're all cut up and ripped up. Don't think they ain't going to hell. Because if you don't know Jesus, you're on that road. Not that God wants to send you there, but you and I choose what you cultivate. Amen? You choose what you cultivate. And everything on planet Earth, you know, is cultivating the external man, the intellectual man, right? But everything in the kingdom of God has to do with internals first. Now, I believe when you get your house right in order with God and the right things begin to work and the Holy Ghost begins to work and function, then you're going to see the fruit come out, the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness, meekness. Self-control is the fruit of the Spirit. You're going to see those things. See, that's one thing you got to do. You can't lie to yourself. You can't be eating a bunch of ice cream late at night and then go, the devil attacked me. The devil didn't attack you. You put all that uh, 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 dairy in your system. And as you get older, the dairy and the cheese and the this and the that begins to affect your system it does especially if you eat it late and then you go right to bed your body can't break it down as good so i ain't even gonna go there because a lot of people get all messed up in the head over that and they want to explain every length they think. man it's common sense eat the good foods manage and balance the intake of the sweets and all the things that's just the truth right so it's not like you need to go get taught on every little issue about health if you're living with the holy ghost he'll let you know all right. Now, I'm not saying if you need a course, go to courses. There's plenty of information because until you receive God's help. Right. He's the only one that can sustain you. Now, the Bible does tell us encourage one another, provoke one another. So that's good. We're supposed to do that. But the world is marketed that thing. OK, now you need that. See me. I don't need it. I, the greatest truth to most people, they just need to be honest. It's like what they used to say in the old days, take a look in the mirror. You just need, it's, and that's the problem with a lot of, lot of Christians and a lot of people in the world. They just don't want to be honest with themselves. See, the first foundational truth in, until you can, to launch you is to look at the fact that a change needs to happen. That you are unable in and of yourself to get to where God wants you to go. That's it. If you could come to that revelation on your own, meaning with God's help, and he, trust me, he's broadcasting all the time. He's always broadcasting. But a lot of people are like turning the channel because they don't want to hear the truth. Amen. And when you hear that truth, you go, man, I need to make that change. Even if you don't make that change that day, if you've received that revelation to make change, then the process has begun. The process has begun. Because all you need to do is allow that seed of revelation to hit your heart, not reject it, not reject it, not reject it. See, if you look in the man to change you, you look in the government to change you, you look in everybody else to make the change, you ain't never going to change. You'll just have a temporal change. You know what a temporal change is? And then the devil or the flesh will dupe you right back into the same lifestyle you had before, right? A, and, and any change is good change, but the greatest change is a permanent change of your relationship with him first. And it's in.
And it's just going to stay that way until Christians start doing their part and stop just playing church because it ain't about having just church. It's about a revelation. People that are on planet Earth should have a challenge. Ain't nothing wrong with a challenge. That's why he said you're an overcomer. You got to overcome it. This is the victory that overcomes the world, faith. We try to hide like there ain't no challenges. Well, that's just religion. Real faith deals with challenges. The Apostle Paul had challenges. Jesus had challenges. Peter had challenges. That's what, look at, I mean, look at Hebrews 11. It never says, and they were just peaceable and joyous and everything was hunky-dory and fine and wonderful. I mean, give me a break. They were fine. They were joyful. They rejoiced in prison, right? They stopped the mouths of lions, subdued kingdoms by faith, put to flight the armies of the aliens, the enemies, by faith. But externally, there was challenges. There was difficulties. There was problems, right? So that's why I don't like no bunk preaching that always makes it sound like, you know, if you'll do this, your life will just change in one day and everything will be a little fine and dandy. That ain't the truth at all. You can't just apply one principle and then your whole life have a drastic change overnight. The only thing that can happen is if Jesus becomes Lord and his spirit enters in your life, then a drastic change occurs. But it starts in, the, it starts in your spirit. When you get regenerated, now the DNA and the blueprint of God is in there. And then he tells you, walk out that salvation with reverence. Walk it out in faith. Walk it out with tenderness of consciousness. Because that's the place where God wants to work, in the internal place. See, whatever goes on internal will be played out in the earth. Amen? So that's where it starts. So he says right here, understand this, and that's why you and I have to be more conscious of our spirit than anything else. That doesn't mean we don't acknowledge. That means that we don't see what's going on. That doesn't mean that we don't, you know, recognize that there's challenges, there's trials, there's problems. Uh, there's all kind of stuff going on. It just means that you and I don't allow that to subjugate us and our minds and to bring us into bondage, and to bring us into a place of where we're incapacitated not, and not able to function and deal and cope with life. How many understand while you're on planet Earth? That's the enemy's plan. Confusion, steal, kill, destroy, right? Die vision, right? And people say, there's only one vision, friend. It's God's vision. And if you want life to work right, then you, you find a way to stay in his vision. There's only one vision for humanity, right, period. And God will, uh, that kind of got bopped out of the way, but God reinstated that through the church. So we're to carry God's vision into the church, God's will, God's purpose. He'd have all men to be saved. That means born again, receive his life, his nature. Salvation includes everything. Healing, prosperity, deliverance, freedom. But see, the world has a way in which they want to go about and do it. They want to do it in and of their own strength, in and of their own ability. And if you do it in your own strength, your own ability, you got to lie, cheat, act dishonest. You got to undermine. You got to dominate others. You got to control others. You got to step on others to get those things that, are in the earth when the Lord has a plan, doesn't he? He says, seek me first. And then what he does, he distributes uh, those gifts, those qualities, those things that he's planned for every human being. Every one of us, God has given and made all things available. There's no lack. Amen. The only lack that is on the inside. There's no limitations for anybody in this room. How many understand that? Now we realize there's going to take a source and a supply of information and knowledge to get you to be able to apprehend. Why? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by, by the word. 
So, you know, faith starts with knowledge. So if you don't have precise, accurate knowledge of who he is, you know, then what's happening is there's an area of captivity that could be working. How many of you understand? If, if you don't know and you're not sure and you're not fully persuaded like Abraham was that Jesus is your healer, well, then you could be vacillating. You know what I mean? You're vacillating. And that vacillation comes depending upon the, the source of information you put your ear to. Now, I'm going to be truthful. If all you do is listen to reports of the news about COVID, you're flooding your ears with this stuff. And then your natural mind is being fed because your spirit don't receive that. Your spirit don't receive that. Now you think, see, and, and of course there's a fine line. You can just look and observe knowledge, but I mean, do you really believe that your hand gel, your mask, not touching things has preserved you? I mean, really? That would mean that everything was dependent upon you. I mean, what's the difference between you and someone who supposedly got sick? Was it a mask? Because they wore masks. They wore gloves. People wear masks and gloves and get sick. So, you know, I don't put all my faith in a mask in jail. I mean, that's like disrespect to God. You know what I mean? Use it. It's like the Lord told me, don't put all your faith in, you know, taking vitamins to keep your immune system strong. I mean, my God, don't have all that faith in that. Have faith in who he is in you. Romans 8, 11. Because here's the truth. If you and I <clears throat> say, here's something good. You don't really realize how much power is available to you, you know, in this building until you open that panel up and touch it. And once it hits you, then you man, that's some, that's some, I need to be aware of that. Once you get a jolt, a good one, you, whew, man, like, let, let me just tell you. There's some gear and equipment at work that I walk into in, in the electrical room. Big panels, man, as big as this wall. And there's big copper bus bars. They're like that thick. And there's big, you know, wires of copper that are, and I just look at that and I go, oh, that's scary, boy. I mean, even if you grabbed one of those and just touched somebody with it, it just, <laughs> that kind of power just man will burn your finger you know like burn it just burn it off yet it's invisible so it's kind of fascinating yet that power is generated you know it's been harnessed by man and but there's that kind of power in the realm of the spirit but the reality is until you renew your mind right renew your mind and your thinking i mean there's some devastating power that's of god but see it's not going to come through just going to church it comes by having that personal revelation and that kind of power and that's what the enemy doesn't want you to do the enemy would keep you ignorant the enemy would keep you just going to church the enemy would keep you just listening to someone else preach, but you never discovering and you never feeding and you never doing anything yourself individually. How many understand what I'm saying? And just keep you limited in your faith so that your faith doesn't really grow, you know? And uh, just because you get a new car doesn't mean you have great faith. But I'll tell you this, go lay hands on someone with a cancer. Like you're fully convinced, like you just don't even see the cancer. All you see is like that power of Jesus. Just like you see a, a wire, you know, the potential in there. You know, just like you'd see that, that power coming out, you know. 
that power is on the inside of you, but it has to be cultivated. That's the one thing. You have to cultivate the revelation of that power, you know, so it can dismantle all the things, the blockades, the barriers, the sin, the consequences of sin, you know, the, uh, the, uh, what do I want to say? The things that happened previous to you becoming a, a believer. See, because, because now you're in Christ and old things are passed away, but there's still the breakdowns of those things that were in your life previous to coming to Jesus. That still impact a lot of people. They default to those feelings. They default to those emotions. They defer to them. When, when a similar situation is hurled their way by the devil or a situation or a circumstance arises, they default. Why? They have an unrenewed mind. Right, and they haven't cultivated, so they yield to the outward rather than yield to the inward. They yield to their emotions. It happens to all of us, right? So, but we have a way to combat it. That's why the scripture says, I was sharing with some people this week, Second Corinthians, uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Let's look at that real quick. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, see, though we live in the body, we're not denying that we're, you know, we're still on planet Earth. We are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh using mere human weapons. See that? So what this tells you is this, though we're in the body, our battles, our fights, the adversities, the problems, the challenges, the, the uh, offenses, you know, the, advers the, adversa the adversities that come our way are not to be dealt with naturally. If you're a believer, you are not to combat and engage in those things from your natural position, from your body, from your flesh, from your mind, right? With your hands, with, with knives, with guns, with, you know, baseball bats, with, you know, wrenches, you know, with, with cars or whatever natural things that people use to engage in, in warfare with. It says, we're not to use human weapons. So why would we look, here's something that's a question, why would we look for a human weapon to fight an unseen enemy like COVID? Now this might be a, a thought above a lot of people because they would say, well, we're natural. We're, of course we need to find something for our natural man. But you didn't just hear what he said. You don't fight on the level of the natural. Now, the, the unregenerated, worldly person fights on the level of the natural. So he has to look in the natural realm for an antidote because he's without God. Without God. He doesn't have the armor. He doesn't have the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, the breastplate of righteousness. He didn't have the girdle of truth. His feet aren't shod with the preparation of the gospel peace. He doesn't have divine protection. So he has to reach into the earthly realm in order to draw out things. And I don't have to. It says, verse 4, For the weapons of all wherefore are not physical. They're not weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God to the overthrow and destruction. Look, let's just call it what it is. Did you hear what I said? I'm going to hammer on this. Because this is where a believer's position is. My position is the armory. I, I wish I had my other translations, 26 translations, because the things that God has given are for the overthrow destruction what does the other word say of strongholds 
grow. So that means that the church contains the power. The believer contains it. The church contains the power to overthrow the, and bring destruction to, to anything in the earth that's contrary to God's will. That means the Christian, the believer that has personal revelation and understanding about who they are in Christ now, that they've been draped and clothed with his life and nature, that they are armed, they have the armor of God, they put it on and keep it on, that they are now to go out and bring destruction. They are to tear down and dismantle and overthrow that which is contrary to God's will. That's what it says. Now, if that ain't in your heart, in your mind, in your mouth, then you're not living victorious. You're living, you're just not living victorious. Because you're yielding to your natural man. You're trying to figure it out like government. They're trying to figure, they're still sitting here. I'm not speaking against the government, pray for the government, but I'm telling you, too many people, they're even Christians, they're looking to government. They're looking to everybody else but God. I don't care about COVID. I'm just using it as an example. It's a joke to me. I'm using it as an example. You get my point? And you say, well, what do you mean it's a joke? It's a joke to God. What about all those people that die? I'm not saying those people were a joke. I'm saying that disease. Every disease, every infirmity, every uh, inequity that is, that was, is, and is to come, God laughs at it. He sits in the heavens, laughs. God laughs at it. Someone says, that's a mockery. God laughs at it. Do you think the father wants ever, ever? See, if you think the father ever entertains Satan, his work, his inequity, the effects of what he done, do you think he ever, I'm just saying those aspects, do you think if the father ever thinks that's something? Are you kidding me? You, you as a Christian should be, something should be done to you. You should be slapped with love. For this purpose was the Son of Man, Son of God manifested that he would destroy, annihilate, loosen, dissolve, melt down. I mean, you just look at what happened over there in uh, Lebanon. I'm sure you've seen that video. I mean, in the realm of the spirit, the resurrection was bigger than that. That's hard for a lot of people to believe, though. It's really hard for them to believe because their faith is weak or they have no faith. But you saw just some nitrates and some things and some firework things and, you know, whatever, just ignite. And you saw, you know, the, the uh, secondary impact from the blast the 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 waves the repercussions of the blast of ground zero tear down buildings i'm serious now i don't even want to preach because i know people they see this later preaching bugs them so i want to get the information to you but i don't get it to you you know uh in a strong way when jesus resurrected that 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 doesn't even compare because when jesus blew off principalities and powers, shattered them. That's one translation, rendered them, neutralized them, shattered them. But see, it's hard for our minds to believe because you're trying to process, you're trying to comprehend. You can't comprehend that. No more than you can comprehend an atom being cut in half. The only reason you can comprehend an atom being cut in half is because they can show it to you can show it to you through film and explain to you through uh, science 
how to grab an atom, contain it, isolate it, and then cut it to create new, you know, uh, some uh, nuclear energy. They can show you that. So you believe it. But I can't show you the resurrection. I can just explain it to you. But when you put faith in the, what the truth is and what the word of God says, then that power then comes online. And the more you feed and feed and feed and feed and feed to where you conform to that truth. then you're able to detonate that power at any place, any time, anywhere. See, here's the truth. Then we got to get on to uh, the scriptures I was going to share. I'm just giving this nugget. You know, the guys like John G. Lake, that all the people, when, you know, people love to preach about John G. Lake and Wigglesworth. And the amazing thing is when COVID time came, I noticed nobody wanted to practice the lifestyle that John G. Lake and Wigglesworth had. That's funny. So that opened my eyes. It's kind of like what Brother Kim said. You got to live what you preach. Well, then that's time to start having rallies and get the multitude healed and set free. Go out in the streets, highways, byways, stadiums, wherever, man. Start exhibiting that power. I mean, but here's the thing. The difference was those guys they were the ones that attended. Like if you read the stories of Smith Wigglesworth, uh, when Dr. Lester Summerall went into his house, he had brought a newspaper and he said, take that and put it outside and it's rubbish. Put it in the trash can. I don't allow that in my home. That was the newspaper way back when. And that's in Bradford, England. And then he'd say, before we eat, you're going to get scriptures. Scripture, 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 the word of God. So just imagine how much power was in that one man. Enough power that he believed when someone died. He threw one man up against the wall. These are documented facts. He threw him up against the wall. He commanded his life to come back in him. Summerall, all these guys, Wigglesworth, John G. Lake, when the bubonic plague was going on in Africa, said, put it in my hand. The law of the spirit of life. Now, let's, let's just take this real quick. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Think about the laws. There's all kinds of laws, right? I mean, but there's laws in chemistry, laws in medicine. Do you understand that? There's laws, different uh, things and properties. I don't know it all because I haven't studied that, but there's different, you know, um, things that have to connect. They put them under microscopes. They look at the, the, the disease or the bacterias or, you know, whatever it is, and they're able to then combat that through different laws. They're able to connect different, you know, whatever. I don't know how they do it, but do, do you understand there's laws? But all these guys cared about was the law of the spirit of life. So he could say, put that plague in my hand because, I mean, just the energy. And your body itself is just made up of, of electricity. But they fed that. They believed. And they just allowed themselves to go to another place with their walk with God to where they're the ones that were bringing destruction to the enemy's camp, you know? So that's why they're called generals of faith. <laughs> so it, it can be the same for you and I, you know? So he says right here, they're made for the overthrow. Now we have to ask ourselves, okay, Jesus, your resurrection power in life is made for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. So how's that going to work? I mean, I've got to have either Jesus's perspective on the situation or I've got to have the world's perspective. It's not both, to be truthful with you. It's not both. 
There's only one perspective that really means anything. Well, that's God's perspective. But that's something you have to settle in your heart as a person. This is what I've had to learn more and more. Uh, a lot of people that go to church haven't settled that issue all around the world. You have to settle that, right? And so there's a fine line, you know? You got to cross over into the realm. How many of you understand what I'm saying? It doesn't mean you don't go to work, doesn't mean, you know, but the reality is the kingdom of God is the most important aspect of your life. The greatest truth. Now, it doesn't seem like that because you got to get up and go to work and all, but it really is. You live by the truth. Others don't. Others live by their natural inclinations. Others live by how they feel, uh, their impulses, their human appetite, you know, whatever their natural man tells them. But the reality is this. You and I are to live by faith dependence, reliance, and trust on him. So with all this stuff going on, I just want to remind you, uh, let me ask you, uh, <laughs> let me just remind you, if you would, go on over to uh, uh, 1 Peter 5. I just want to read a couple things, just to remind you during these times. Because with all that's going on, There's some things that are, it, it's not that they're real, but they are real. You know what I'm saying? They're real because you're, you're, you're dealing with them. You're, you're experiencing the uh, effects of them, but they're not real in the sense of having authority greater than the authority that God's given you. Amen. So Father, we thank you for ears to hear, eyes to see, Holy Spirit. These words right now and these scriptures will not fall on anything but good soil. We plead the blood of Jesus in this atmosphere and environment. We declare the word as free course and that, Lord, uh, we declare that this uh, environment is off limits to any work of the enemy who would try to uh, draw or distract any person. We declare in the name of Jesus, this is an atmosphere and environment fully charged with the life, the blessing, the anointing of God, destroys the yoke, burnt and removes the burden in Jesus' name. All right, 1 Peter 5 tells us this, verse 7, casting all your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all, on him. For he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Now, I say that because there's a lot of cares going on in the world today. Isn't there? All kind of political junk going on. Reports of COVID. Racial issues. Now, in a greater way, economic issues. I mean, think about it. The economies have been shut down. How's the government receiving taxes? You can't tax unemployment checks. So all the people not working, all the businesses shut down. Taxes aren't being paid. And eventually all that catches up, friend. You can't just start reprinting money. I mean, think about it. You can't just keep reprinting. So businesses, and how about school? Children need to get educated. All the things going on. There's a lot of cares. A lot of worries, a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear going on in people. Um, matter of fact, I told the other day that um, I heard a report. I just happened to be looking at something. I was flicking the channels, and it said that the government stockpiles of, of Zolalof or whatever are down. Anti-depression medicines and all these things are down. Government stockpiles. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. I mean. Not once, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, have I ever thought, man, I better get something to deal and combat this pressure, this stress, this anxiety of this COVID and everything else. Now, there's no condemnation if you've had that thought, but I want to let you know, if you'll just get in his presence and get in his word and get around people that are of faith, 
that yoke, that fear, that stress, that anxiety will be broke off you in the name of Jesus. Amen. It will be obliterated, dismantled, broke. Amen. Come on now. The Lord's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you and I ask or think. And that's the message we carry. Like someone told me the other day, uh, there some people were changing the message that perfect love uh, comforts or something. You know, perfect love comfort. Just comfort the world. Comfort, comfort, comfort. I mean, God wants to comfort people, but perfect love casts out fear, man. You know, I'll tell you how I comfort you. I comfort you by driving out that fear, torment, and worry that you got. And how do you drive out fear? By faith. Bring faith. When faith comes, people become, they become convinced. They become confident about who God is. You just have to choose, right? You either choose or you reject. It's a defining moment in our history, you know? So he says, cast all your cares, all your worries, all your anxieties. Look at, uh, uh, let's look over at uh, Mark real quick. I believe it was Mark, Mark 4 or 5. There you go. He tells us, look at this right here. Uh, verse 18, uh, Mark 4. And the one sown among the thorns and the others who heard the, hear the word, then the cares, anxieties of the world, the distraction of the age. Come on. And the pleasure and delight and false glamour, the deceitfulness of riches, the craving and passionate desire for things creep in and suffocate the word. These are things that are going on. Look, anxieties of the world. The whole world's in anxiety. The world's challenged. People want to get businesses back open. There's, and there's, there's uh, differences of opinion, isn't there? It's just kind of like man's natural inclinations. When scripture tells you, don't lean to your own understanding. You know, if my people are called by my name and humble themselves and pray, turn from their way, then I'll hear from heaven, heal their land. That's simple. Heal their land. You know, someone says that's an Old Testament scripture. It's Old Testament scripture, but the principle is true. Call unto me and I'll answer. It's simple, but it's not simple for the the intellectual, natural person who doesn't know the Lord, who's on the outside. And those are the people, a lot of them, that are in government or in places that are making decisions for you and I. But I believe God's working now to bring change into those areas and those, those uh, you know, departments. But you and I, along the way, can do our part to stay free of these things by making decisions. Uh, look at, look at, uh, let's look at Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12. I want you to see this Luke 12. Casting all your care. Huh? Cast it. All your anxieties, all your worries. The Lord said, put it all on me. all on the cross so why would you carry what jesus already carried okay need i go back to isaiah 53 surely he hath borne our sicknesses weaknesses and distresses sicknesses weaknesses distresses surely he is our born our sickness we have said Surely has carried our sorrows and pains and punishment. We esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He's wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our inequities. Chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Everything was placed upon him. Let's just leave it there. <laughs> Don't take it back. That's possible to take it back. Paul tells us that if I fall back into an old legal system, I've fallen from grace. So it's possible that you can put back 
and take back the fact and try to work out your own life. When he says, cast it all on him, all your cares, all your worries, all your fears, all your concerns. What would that look like if you just didn't have any thought life anymore about worries, fears, anxieties? You know, you're just like, oh, the Lord's my provider. You, but you'd have to do some managing, wouldn't you? You'd have to do some managing. You'd have to manage your thoughts. You'd have to manage your emotions. Because that's where everything starts. You'd have to, you'd have to uh, arrest and quarantine the worries that try to uh, invade your pure mind, the mind of Christ. Come on. It's going to take a little work, isn't it? How many of you know lifting weights, when you, you, you get back to exercising and lifting weights, ooh, boy, you're sore for a couple of days. And it takes about a couple of weeks before you really work out that soreness, right? Because that muscle ain't been used. Well, it's the same thing. When you start, and, and the enemy will see to it to stop you. It's just like, you know, how many of you work out for a day or two and you're sore. And then it comes that day where you know you got to work out, but you're sore. And your mind tells you what? Well, it doesn't say don't work out. If you've ever exercised with weights or anything, this is what your mind tells you. You, you need to rest today. You need to rest. And do you need to rest when you exercise? Do you? You do. But you've only been working out two days. Rest is where you make your growth. But rest, see, notice how it gets twisted. That word rest comes at the wrong time. <laughs> it, it's not to be appropriated right then and there. Rest comes later. But for that third day, you need to press through, don't you? You need to persevere. You need to work through it. But what happens, that thought comes, rest. You need to rest, man. You, you've been working out too hard for two days, and you're really sore, and this is very uncomfortable, and it's hard at work. And you can find all the excuses that will just come to your mind. And they may be genuine, but if you want to obtain – that victory or that goal, you press through. You restrict those thoughts. You discipline them off. You ward them off. Sometimes you got a workout partner that says, come on, man, stop crying. To, to get you motivated to move beyond that threshold that you're locked in. That has tried to neutralize you from going forward. And that's the way it is when you make that decision to put on the mind of Christ and to be consistent and to be faithful and, and to grow and develop and create a mindset where you're just carefree. All my cares, all my worries, all my fears, they're gone. I'm not worried about anything. But there'll always be others that say, what kind of medical insurance do you have? And what about this? And what about that? And what about your future? And what about your 401k? And what about, I mean, those are all good things. But if you're not in a position right now, you should not overburden yourself with these kind of thoughts. The Lord is able to direct you into the right places at the right time. Not everybody's life is going to be the same as somebody else's. Do you understand that? And the reality is your faith can be in the promise of God. Now, you know, there's times where I didn't have medical insurance. But I never thought once, what if I get sick? What if something terminal happens? What about this? What about that was never my thought. I never ever entertained those things. And someone says, Well, you're just out of touch. I can be out of touch, but I stayed healthy by the grace of God. Now I have medical insurance, but I'm not going, got some union medical insurance. Now I'm safe. I still have the same thought. The life of Jesus in me. Now, I have to cooperate with that, don't I? But anyway, casting all your cares, all your worries, all your fears. A lot of times, fears, anxieties, worries, and all these things show up when other people start talking and chiming in your ears. Do you know that? That's when they arise. When other people, or you start looking at things. The devil goes, look at them and look at you. 
and you start comparing, then all the fears and worries show up, right? Because you slip back into your natural thinking, right? When you just need to stay the course, keep walking with Jesus, keep being led by a spirit. He's faithful. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. Let me get over to Luke. Let me get over to Luke real quick. Read the previous verses, but in Luke 12, 22, um, they're going to amplify. And Jesus said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, don't you be anxious and troubled with cares about your life as to what you're going to have to eat about your body. Uh-oh, come on now. About your body. You know what some, people's, some people say right now? Well, if I get it, I get it. If I get it, don't take that position. I mean, you know why people say that? Because they're tired of being like sheltered and they're just so burned out with hunkering and bunkering and doing everything else. They're like, if I get it, I get it. But that doesn't have to be your confession. Take no thought about your body. With you, I'm not going to live every day with the fear of it. Don't live with the fear and anxiety of it. Live in communion with Him. I'm not saying, you know, don't clean your hands when you touch stuff. You know, that's just a general practice anyway, isn't it? It's a general practice, you know. So, anyway, he says, don't be concerned about your body as what you will have to wear. For life is more than the food in the body, more than clothes. Observe and consider the ravens, how they sow not, reap, nor gather. God feeds them. How much more worth are you? Just say that. I'm of great value. Which of you, now listen, listen, you ready? Which of you, by being overly anxious and troubled with cares, can add a cubit to his stature one moment? a unit of time to his age or length of life. Can anybody add anything? No. He says, if then you're not able to do such a little thing as that, God said that was little. Why are you anxious and troubled with cares about the rest? Consider these lilies, how they grow. They neither wearily toil nor spin or weave. Yet I'm telling you, Solomon was not clothed like this. If God did all that for the grass, which today and tomorrow is put in heaven, will he not much more clothe you with little faith? There's the problem. Discovered the issue. Little faith has a heavy concentration on externalities. Doesn't make him a bad person. But little faith is concentrated on externalities all the time. Money, clothes, 401ks, what's going to be like when I'm, when I'm older. And you see, it's, it's kind of like an oxymoron because should you not be concerned about any of those? No, you, 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 you can assess them and, and look at them, but just don't be over occupied with them. Don't allow them, don't make life decisions based upon them, Right? You don't need to talk to your financial advisor first. Talk to God. Talk to the Lord. Lord. I hear the Lord saying, Lord, what should I do? And the first thing the Lord says, well, I'll tell you. You better start being a tither and a giver. A lot of people, they want to talk about their financial advisor and all this. It's like the, the first thing the Lord's going to tell them is, look. You know, uh, I'm the Lord, your shepherd, to guide, lead, and feed you. I want to recommend that you start tithing and giving, that you open up that area of your life to me and let me lord it over that area as well. Because no matter what anyone says, it's all about the Benjamins. Don't be deceived. Why is the PG and A going still? PGA. There are certain things that are going still. Everything gets down to the dollar. 
just open your eyes and see the world is governed by money and dominance. It is, right? Uh, is the stock market closed because of the COVID? Mm -hmm. People are still making a lot of money. You just don't know those people. There's a lot of people making money. Business has kept going in many areas. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things still going. So here you go. Let, let me hear it. He says, uh, and do you not seek, do not seek by meditating and reasoning to inquire what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. Don't be anxious. Don't be of a troubled mind, unsettled, excited, worried, and in suspense. This fits in with a lot of people because a lot of people are struggling financially. Maybe not in San Francisco, but around the rest of the world, you know? I mean, you may not be struggling, thank God, but there are a lot of people are. And so you and I, you know, we need to carry this message. This is what Jesus says, and it's good to refresh ourselves so we're not fearful, we're not weighed down, okay? He says only, oh, don't be like the, here it is, verse 30. For all the pagan world, the unbelievers, is greedily seeking these things and your father knows that you have need of them let me tell you this do you know a lot of people companies that are selling masks right now do you think they started selling those masks because they really cared about humanity or did they see a profit margin in it that's their income from it they didn't do it they there's so many people selling masks now, designer masks, this mask, that. They see an opportunity to make money even in the midst of a national crisis. You know, I mean, they don't care. Okay, here you go. Let me, uh, I want to read a, a, a couple more real quick, but I got to get you this one real quick in, the, in this translation. Uh, in the TPT, Jesus says uh, in verse 22, listen to me. Jesus says, listen to me. Who should you be listening to? CNN, Fox News, uh, you know, the local reporter, ABC, Channel 5. Jesus says, listen to me. Never let anxiety enter your hearts. Luke 12. Never worry about any of your needs, such as food and clothing. Some say, that's easy for you to say. I'm telling you, if you'll quit complaining, I'm not, I'm not saying us here, but I'm saying people say that all the time. If you'll quit complaining, if you'll stop worrying, if you'll stop allowing the fear, the doubt, the anxiety, the unbelief enter in, God would be able to bring people those people's way, you know? But they don't. They just continue on the problem. He says, never worry about, for your life is infinitely more than just food or clothing you wear. Take a care, take, now listen, this is the why the word I wanted to bring up. Take the carefree birds as your example. Do you ever see them weary? They don't grow, they don't even grow their own food or put it in storehouses for later. See, God takes care of every one of them, feeding each of them from his love and his goodness. Isn't your life more precious to God than a bird? Be carefree in the care of God. Be carefree in the care of God. Well, I believe we're carefree here this morning, but boy, this is a good word to remind yourself. I am carefree because during the week when the pressure, the challenges come, you need to say, I'm carefree, man. I'm COVID free. I'm carefree. I'm uh, worry free. I'm anxiety free. Don't feed in to all the other stuff. He says, uh, be carefree in the care of God. Does worry add anything to your life? Does it? This fear? This anxiety? So if worrying adds nothing, but actually subtracts from your life. See, and if you have fear about uh, politics, you know, who's going to win the president race? What if this happens? What if that happens? Hey, whatever happens, happens. I mean, whatever you believe, pray for that direction. But whatever happens, happens ultimately. That ain't going to change your faith. Ain't going to change my faith. Thank you to Jesus. I'm carefree in the care of God. 
So, it, it, but I, if worrying adds nothing, but actually subtracts from your life, why would you worry about God's care for you? Think about those lilies. They don't, you know. He says, oh, struggling one with so many doubts. Don't let worry enter your life. Live above the anxious cares about your personal life. People everywhere seem to be worrying about making a living. But your heavenly father knows your every need and will take care of you. I mean, he fed people in the wilderness, manna. He fed them, uh, uh, what was the uh, quail. He fed Elijah. He fed the widow woman. Jesus got the coin. Jesus multiplied the bread and the fish. Uh, where else? Come on, get some more miracles out. He, the crew of oil never dried up. I mean, all through the scriptures, David ate at the house of the Lord, the showbread, him and his, his men. I mean, uh, you know, uh, oh, come on. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord bring it up right now. How about uh, um, Ruth? Ruth, man, going through the fields. Boaz said, go on, get you something. And then, and then Boaz said to her, matter of fact, get some extra and give it to her. I mean, you know, we can go on and on and on and on and on. You know? Huh? Manna. And then what's her name? Uh, what's the lady's name? Went into the king's house. Lord showed her faith. Huh? Esther. Man. They don't need to worry about anything. You know? We see the healings, the miracles. Woman with issue of blood. People dead in tombs. The Lord, you know, Lazarus. You know? Zacchaeus. Shoot a night woman. You know? Provisions everywhere. Spiritual provision. Spiritual manna. Physical manna. It's all there for us. All things. God's given us. So we're the ones that, but this is what we're practicing, and I believe it. So it's not like a message that I don't believe you're practicing. We're all practicing. It just remind us to become more steeped and more reinforced in it. Amen. No, I'm carefree in the care of God. Amen. Let me read one more verse. Go to Psalms 55. Psalms 55. Let's see. Uh, verse 22. So is, this is the TPT. So here's what I've learned through it all. Psalms 55, 22. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord. And measureless grace will strengthen you. Isn't that good? He will watch over his lovers, never letting them slip or being overthrown. He'll send all my enemies to the pit of destruction. Isn't that good? Leave all your cares. Ain't that what Peter said? Peter probably read that. Cast all your cares. Throw all your cares. Get rid of all your cares. Worries, anxieties, and fears. Uh, an example of that, let, let's look at one more. Well, one more. Luke 21, then we're going to close it up. Luke 21. An example of cares would be something that everybody knows is Martha. Remember Martha? She was cumbered about with much business and all these cares were on her. And what did Jesus say? There's one thing that's needful. See, Jesus didn't say don't serve. He just said don't be consumed and encumbered about by all these cares and things. Select the first things first, priorities. Priority of spiritual order. 34. But take heed. Remember, we started out saying hard, challenging times. Just take heed. Don't allow what's going on externally to seep its way and find its way into your mind, your emotions, your heart, your words, your life. Take heed to yourselves. Be on guard, lest your hearts be overburdened and depressed. Weighed down with giddiness and headache. Nausea of self-indulgence, drunkenness, worldly worries and cares pertaining to the business of this life. Lest that day come upon you suddenly like a noose. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the entire planet. But you, just stay awake. You stay awake. You stay awake, he says. 
Watch, be discreet, attentive, praying that you'll have strength and ability to escape all these things together and stand in the presence of the Son of God. That's talking in the end times. I mean, are we in the end times? To some degree. There you go. Luke 21, TP. Be careful that you never allow your hearts to grow cold. Guess what he says? Remain passionate. Care for, there's two words for us today. Carefree in the care of God. That means we're trusting him, relying upon him, depending upon him. Carefree. And then remain passionate. Don't just grow cold, free from anxiety and the worries. Then you'll not be caught off guard. Don't let me come find you drunk and careless, living like everybody else, worried, drunk. You know what I mean by drunk? They're drunk and intoxicated with the garbage of this world. Think about it. Race things going on. People are intoxicated with anger. They're intoxicated with hatred. They're intoxicated and inebriated with all kinds of stuff going on. I'm not talking about alcohol. They're drunk. They're, they've ingested all the putridness of the enemy. It says, don't you be a part of that. Right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Paul said, these different challenges come. My grace is sufficient. Amen. The grace of God is sufficient for you and I. Not only to get through this, but to thrive. And there's one thing that bugs me. I don't know. Yes, I guess it does bug me. There's a lot of phony people out there that say all the right things. You know what I mean? Don't be one of those. Challenge yourself to really get these truths in your heart and to live them. Now, of course, everyone thinks they're living that. But I suppose that the people that Jesus addressed when he said, oh, you of little faith, I bet you they thought they had great faith. You know what I'm saying? You, if you were to ask somebody where your faith is today, um, I don't know. I don't. I, I would just say this present moment. I'm endeavoring to have great faith. I'm never going to say, "Well, I have little faith." I'm not going to make that ugly confession about my life. And I'm not going to say, "Well, I'm kind of in the." I'm not going to say. I'm just saying, man, I'm endeavoring to have great faith. Do I know if I have great faith? Don't know. I'm not sitting around asking Jesus. I mean, you could. He, he could tell you you have great faith. I mean, I, that's not a main thing to me. I just want to walk every day in communion, trusting him, and then thereby I know I have faith, making choices and decisions out of my spirit, not out of my head, not out of my body, not out of the populist opinion, not out of the news. I'm telling you, it, it, the greatest challenge I have is, is walking the earth getting frustrated because of all the people that just don't believe. But then that's what Jesus experienced too. And it's frustrating because you want to connect with people that are of like precious faith. You want people to be in agreement. There's power in agreement. And you go everywhere and people are just worried and they're and, and, and fearful. And they're, you know, of course you, you don't buy into that, but it's just like, it's where the world's at, man. Cause they ain't got no faith. And so that, then you have to exercise love, don't you? You know? So, you know, there's all kinds of things you're going to have to walk in. So praise the Lord. Well, we're carefree. This message was brought to you by Living Water Fellowship San Francisco. You can connect with us on Facebook or email us at sflivingwater.com.